This is Jackie, and I'm here with Jacob in Hartswick. We are at the Virginia stop of the very last full tour of Van's Warped Tour. And I think we've spoken before in previous years. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Long Island. Maybe. Probably. Probably. So what has gone on for In Hearts Week since then? We have released at least one record. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's been a while. Just just one record. <laughs> but still it takes a long chunk of your life. Yeah, and last uh, last month you released the deluxe edition of yeah. ARC. What was the thinking behind that? Oh, it's just instrumentals on a whole extra CD, as well as like acoustic tracks. And we got a uh, guest vocalist uh, from a band called Biotis Murder, a good friend of ours. So we just thought, hey, extra content for the fans, always a help, plus Warp Tour, let's get it in, you know, some nice shiny gold packaging and enjoy. <laughs> and how is ARC uh, kind of an evolution of sound since Divination? Uh, having played so many small shows in little rooms, which is great, to then taking, you know, what we did to bigger stages, we thought when we realised, hmm, some of these songs don't translate as, as well without that intensity and low roof atmosphere. So we naturally, the songs that started coming out were more crowd involved and for bigger stages. So the arc songs are more anthemic and just, yeah, for bigger audiences. So how do you go about choosing your set list for Warp Tour? Yeah, that's, I mean, you can generally just look at Spotify and see, okay, what's the most played? That's, gen that's the general gist of it. At the same time, you still have to cut them down. You can only fit like five, six songs in a 30-minute set. So we go for the hits, and then we see what flows well together. Do you try to play your songs at similar or identical to how they sound uh, recorded, or do you try to change them up, or do you just kind of depend on what happens that day? Uh, some, with some of the gaps before breakdowns and things like that, we'll extend them and put like an anchor man sample in there. <laughs> so like we do, we do lots of... One thing we used to do in one of our tracks, normally just go straight into like a crushing breakdown. We put, um, I think it was Whitney Houston, and like so everyone's like moshing and then and like ready for the breakdown, and then just goes and uh, goes into this, and everyone's like, and then they start like something like this because they pissed off, then they start laughing, and, and then we have a laugh, and then we go back to the real thing. So we do things like that. I think that helps. You got to change things up a little bit. It does. Bit. So you mentioned um, choosing your your set list based on Spotify. What role do you see Spotify having um, in 2018 and beyond? It's, it's got a huge role. I won't just say Spotify as well, just online streaming in general. Because uh, you're av everyone's got a cell phone in their pocket. Almost everyone. And not everyone has CD players anymore. And uh, yeah, it's, I guess it's where the accessibility is. And it's even though it's such a fraction, it's such a small little amount of financial gain. However, you pull all of the billions of cell phones together of people checking out music, and it adds up quick. So for the first time, we're seeing in the industry like spikes um, in revenue coming back. You know, so there's more there's more listeners, and the amounts are so small, but it's still it's it's adding up. So do first week album sales still mean anything or is there, is there still an importance or a value to them? I still, um, I mean, honestly, I don't think they mean anything anymore. I think it's all it's rubbish at the end of the day because country music artists or people who buy Mother's Day CDs, they're going to kill it. They're going to crush it. But, you know, bands on Warp Tour, not as much. So, you, I, mean it, I mean, no matter what country is going to be bigger, but rel the relative, it's different now. So it's going to streaming, and I mean, that's just a number. And at the end of the day, it's how, it's how much a band hustles or the managers hustle. And it's just a bit of a game. So as long as the music's good and it's out there for people to have access to, that's the main thing. Speaking of that music, any, or what are the plans to follow up ARC? Don't have any plans. Oh, okay. No plans. Just kind of seeing yeah. what the rest of the year leads to? Yeah, it's been all ARC up, up until it gets to the end of this tour. Then we can look at what do we want to do. I think it's time for some personal growth so that when we come back as a collective, we can add those things to something else. So what's up after Warp to break? Yeah, nice, 100%. Like, like personal yeah. vacation? Like. Oh, yeah, definitely checking out 100%. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Well, stay tuned for much more from In Hearts Wake. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and In the Key of Change.